so let's talk about the flood, God's solution to this uh, very violent group of people. Uh, so on a high level, I'm just going to say the flood is a massive planetary event. And there's no way to cover the whole earth with water without upsetting a lot of other things along the way. So what I'm going to be presenting here today is developed by uh, Dr. John Baumgartner, who worked at Los Alamos National Laboratories and is responsible for a lot of our uh, computer models of uh, plate tectonics. Um, so the scale of things we're talking about here is more than just water. It's about geology and plate tectonics. So if you want some mental imagery, this is a good start. We're talking about whole plates being turned over and cities destroyed. Um, so there's no wonder there's not much left. So the way this model works is that, uh, I want to say it was the 1970s when they were first really looking into plate tectonics, they actually got a hold of some of the stuff that the interior of the planet is made out of, the mantle. And they found that it was very solid when it wasn't under a lot of pressure. But what happens is if you put it under more pressure, that it's a semi-crystalline substance is the technical term. It generates heat as it's put under pressure. And when it generates heat, it becomes more viscous and fluidy. And that, that allows you to, to make it move faster, and then which generates more heat. And you get a runaway effect where you can go from solid to liquid uh, in a hurry if, if there's enough force. So uh, the concept with runaway plate subduction is that you start with a heavy oceanic plate. You start with a plate that is heavier than the mantle it's sitting on top of. So you th picture a, a book sitting on top of a, 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 the le a ledge. And there's a very small initial event that just pushes it over. And it begins diving uh, into, the, into the mantle. And as it's diving, the force of it basically turns a lot of the interior mantle into a much more fluidic substance. And so it runs away. So what this does is uh, you start with you know, uh, Pangaea, one continent. And you have a break where we would now think of as the Pacific Ocean. And basically it rips open that continent. And we have what's called the Mid-Atlantic Rift. Um, and, and, and the old Pacific plate drops down towards the core of the planet, and it exposes uh, water will flow downhill. And so it's exposing the interior mantle of the planet, and then the water flows into it. Then you have, would it be magma or lava, uh, contacting water, and uh, the water being vaporized, and basically the entire oceans... Uh, being recirculated multiple times up through the atmosphere, vaporizing the ocean and having it come down again as rain on the Earth. So this is a really, really catastrophic event. Um, and we can actually model this. This is Terra. It's a plate simulation. And you can see along that boundary there is where uh, the initial break happens and, uh, and then it, it rips open... Um, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and we can, we can model kind of the movement of the plates and everything like that. This, uh, there's actually some new stuff with this recently where they're starting to model like uh, erosion and sedimentation as well. Um, oh, I skipped over some interesting evidence. Um, there's actually some evidence. You know what? I really like this, so I'm going to go back. <laughs> um, there's some interesting evidence for this, I think, which is uh, these. So... Every time there's an earthquake, the, you get something kind of like an ultrasound where you have these sound waves bouncing around. And the, uh, the, the density of the interior of the earth is made visible. So runaway plate subduction would predict that there are very dense, cool objects sitting on the core, which is the hottest part of the earth. So it's not something you would expect to happen naturally. And it turns out this is actually the case. These are cold blobs that are... Um, that are sitting underneath, uh, underneath the Pacific Ocean. These are massive uh, tectonic plate-sized objects, which are 300 degrees cooler than the surrounding mantle. Uh, honestly, I'm still surprised, even if this only happened like 4,000 years ago, I'm surprised these things are still here, because you know, 4,000 years is a long time for things to heat up, but 
flip side of that is that uh, uh, a tectonic plate has a lot of thermal mass. Um, so uh, the a question that comes up a lot is, where do the layers come from, right? So every time you go cut through a road cut in the road or things like the Grand Canyon, you can see these layers. So what's going on there? Um, well, these crazy creation scientists have been claiming that these layers can happen very suddenly. Um, and they've been, they've been claiming this for a long time, but there was not like a lot of evidence for it. Well, then this happened, uh, Mount St. Helens. And Mount St. Helens did what creation scientists have been claiming was possible uh, for, uh, for a long time. And so we actually got kind of a laboratory experiment. Uh, it's very rare. So this whole layer here was deposited by Mount St. Helens. You can see there's stripes in it. And, you know, there's two different events. But we have all of the striations and, and uh, different types of, of sediment and everything like that. And these were deposited in less than a week. Uh, so uh, the way I like to think of this is um, how much work you can do has nothing to do with time. It has to do with how much force you have. So if you have a lot of force, you can get a lot of work done in a very short period of time. If you have very little force... You can't do, get a lot of work done, right? Period. So if you picture, uh, like if you have uh, a car and you drive, get in the car and drive through uh, a hilly city, and then you go and park that car and you put on the emergency brake. If you get out of the car and you look at the tires with a very sensitive instrument, you will find that that car is slipping down the hill. And so you could take that speed at which it's slipping down the hill given evidence of where the car came from and say that car took millions of years to get there. Um, but it, it's all dependent on your starting assumptions. So oh, there's a, so six hours for the first part. And, and I'm going to skip over trees for right now, but there's some interesting stuff with trees. Um, and uh, if you want more mental imagery, uh, check out the movie 2012. It's a horrible movie, great special effects. Um, okay. So now we're going to...